Sorry about that. It's just playing one of my favorite games, Boom Beach. Uh, what I really like about this about this game, it represents the, I guess, the apex of casual gaming. Unlike hardcore games, uh, casual games are they're easy to learn, easy to pick up, and you don't need a, a huge amount of time to to play these games. So today I'm going to talk about the evolution of casual gaming, um, starting with its origins. Uh, what constitutes casual gaming, and also where the industry of casual gaming is headed today. So, let's begin. In the book Casual Revolution, Reinventing Video Games and Their Players, Jesper Jewell traces the roots of casual gaming and found that before the term became recognized, there were some games that could be considered as prototype casual games. The 1980 game Pac-Man could arguably be the first casual video game. What set it apart from other games of its day was its broad appeal, particularly among females. At this stage of video gaming, it was a scene dominated by young teen males. So casual games in this early stage were the exception, not the rule, and the idea of appealing to everyone had not been grasped. Other notable casual games in embryonic form included Solitaire, that was packaged with every Windows operating system, and Tetris. Now, casual gaming was once assumed to be in opposition to hardcore gaming. Hardcore gamers spend massive amounts of time devoted to their game and a level of difficulty can be very high. However, research carried out by Jewel and others have shown that casual gamers can be just as dedicated. Jewel has shown that there are five design principles that constitute casual game design and contribute to gamers spending a lot of time on their games. First, Players are drawn to the game through fiction, which comes across as bright, happy, and positive. Hardcore fiction tends to have a dark and almost gloomy feel about it. Second is usability. Games should be easy to use, but not necessarily easy to conquer. Third is interruptibility. Although saving your game and coming back to where you were last is not a unique feature of casual games, Jules points out that they have at least one distinct psychological aspect. That is, players will have some indication as to the length of the game time-wise and thus they will know in advance as to how much time they'll need to dedicate to their game. Fourth is difficulty and punishment. As with the classic arcade games such as Donkey Kong, they were simple in concept and gameplay, but as Billy Mitchell famously pointed out in King of Kong, most games will be played in less than a minute. In casual games, gameplay is usually simple, just like their early prototype predecessors, but mastering them can be elusive. And this is what brings back players to try again and again to reach those higher levels. Lastly, juiciness is what gives casual games their visual aura. Games like Candy Crush feature excessive graphics that excite you when you have made multiple combinations. This immediate and often over-the-top feedback provides satisfaction and excitement to players. Well, I'm back again. So the last part I'd like to talk about is the impact that casual games has had on the gaming industry. Jason Tans, in a 2011 Wired article, pointed out the gloominess surrounding the console industry, with slides in sales over 10% in a single year. Traditional game makers were hit even harder and their stocks halved. With the rise in smartphones, tablets and social media, developers and startups have taken advantage of these plat platforms with simple but endearing games. Farmville, for example, had signed up 110 million people alone in 2011. Other games such as Return to Ravenshurst, as Mia Consalvo points out, show that casual gamers could be as dedicated as hardcore gamers. The evolution of casual gaming can be best summed up by Mia when she concludes, quote, Although Return to Ravenshurst may be classified as a casual game, for many of those who play it, it is far from a casual experience, and they are far from being casual gamers, unquote. Casual games, as we can see, may not be as casual as we think. Thank you for watching. And now, I'll get back to playing my game again.